I am exhausted. Um, I've been unconscious for a while, but um, now that I've regained consciousness, I'm not sleeping properly, and uh, my body is just very physically drained uh, at this point. You scared? I am, and I, I, I spent a night in bed here with my mom crying and just like, just being really scared. You know, I, I think when I first came to regain consciousness, I, I saw my little brother and I didn't recognize him. I said, hi, Paul, thinking it was my friend Kelly's partner. And then when I realized it was my little brother, like confusion is another symptom, but like it was, it was very terrifying for me. Um, the uncertainty of whether or not I needed a liver or if I would even get a liver, that scared me because I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to die. This phenomenon of, of a liver being denied someone who hasn't been abstaining f for six months, you know, the implication of that is that it's a choice, you know, is that it's, it's a self-inflicted thing. Mm -hmm. What does that miss? I think that it misses the fact that Alcoholism is also a disease. Um, I think it also misses the fact of um, all of the progress that I've made in the last year with my sobriety. Um, I think that things should be looked at a more individual case-by-case -case basis, but to be written off because of struggles that I had um, following the national inquiry into missing or murdered indigenous women and girls. It's, it's a very uncertain process and it's very scary. They will make the argument that it's too much of a risk to give a liver to someone who has a problem with sobriety. You know, what if you drink again? And so is that a question you ask yourself? What happens if I drink again? Are you confident but, that you wouldn't? But. I, I, I personally do feel confident that I wouldn't. Um, after my sister passed away, I, I definitely turned to unhealthy coping mechanisms. I know they would make that argument, but there are many other things that affect a liver that are so readily recommended. You know, I couldn't afford to get my wisdom teeth taken out, so um, they would just tell me to take Tylenol. And once when I went to the detox, my liver was hurting after a binge. They told me to just take Tylenol, you know? What it all came down to, it, it wasn't because I was drinking. It was Tylenol toxicity over a long period of time, dealing with different, you know, yeah. doctor's orders, recommendations, that sort of thing. The focus is very biased. It's damning someone who already has the disease it's reinforcing a stigma. Now there's a chance things could change in Ontario. A pilot project is set to begin in August that will relax the six month abstinence rule. Over three years, it's expected to provide transplants to nearly 100 patients with alcohol related liver disease. That doesn't mean the six month rule will permanently be scrapped and the provincial agency in charge warns that the relaxed rules could end up increasing overall wait times. And it is not at all clear whether this change will make a difference for Delilah Saunders.